We're so happy to have you watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. Oh my goodness, I know God has some really great things for you. I was praying about our time together and God dropped a verse in my heart to encourage you and it's Philippians 1 verse 6. And this is what Paul says, but this is what God says to you today. For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. You may be watching today and you might be discouraged. You might be looking at your life saying, oh my goodness, it's a wreck, it's a disaster, it's, you know, oh, it's just absolutely horrible. But God wants to encourage you today that the good things that God has started in your life, God will finish those things. You are a masterpiece in the making. So get on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you. And maybe there are some things specifically that you say, well, I'd like God to finish up with the finances or I'd like God to finish working, helping me in this particular area on my job. Or maybe there's some character shortcomings, deficiencies where you're like, I really need God to help me overcome these weaknesses, these weak spots. We'd love to pray for you. Get on the phone, get on the website. We just see God do absolutely incredible things. And, you know, mom, one of the ways we see God move really powerfully in a, in a very practical way, I love it, is on our group trips. Exactly, because we go into nations, and I'm telling you, nations get in your heart when you go on a group trip with us. And our next one, oh, 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 November 1st through the 12th, is in Ireland and Scotland. Can you imagine? Some of you have Irish background, Scottish background, and we are going to be a part of this nation, both of these areas, to change them because we have ministry opportunities in Dublin, Belfast, Scotland. I mean, it is awesome. Now, Sarah, when I think of Ireland, I think of St. Patrick. Yep. And you know, most people think, oh yeah, yeah, I know the three leaf, four leaf clover, all of that. But it's far more than that. If you read his life, you will see he is magnificent in what God did in him and through him. Now, I want you to think about Ireland and England at this time because there were some wonderful churches in England along the coast, but the Irish people, Irish nation as such, had people who were, how can I say it, uh, like cannibals. They ate people. They had a lot of tribal people. So they would come along the coast of England and they would get into the churches, get the gold, the wealth, and they would take young people, take them back. Sometimes they ate the people, but many times they made them slaves. And Patrick was a young man taken as a slave in his teens. And they chained him to a stake. They didn't eat him. They chained him to a stake and he had to feed pigs. For six years, he had no one to talk to, but he had the Lord. He's a born again believer. And in that timing, he developed such a relationship with God that it is awesome. And then what happened is that God showed him a way to get back to England. So I don't know exactly how that way was. That wasn't told in his biography and autobiography, but he got back to England. And in England, you know, he served God, was so grateful to God, but one night he had a dream. And he dreamt that he went to Ireland and preached to the tribal leaders and preached Jesus to them. So he goes to the church and volunteers to go. They said, no, no, everybody we send gets killed, gets eaten something. We have a man there. He's not eaten yet. And so, no, no. But that man was killed. So, you know, you don't have a lot of volunteers just saying, whoopee, I get to go to these tribal people. And they sent him. And when he got there, they were waiting for him, several tribal leaders, and they had a group to take him. And he said, now, before you kill me, I have to tell you a dream. And he told him about the dream that he was to come to Ireland and tell them about Jesus Christ, who died for their sins and arose from the dead. And these two tribal leaders were so touched by it. And they said, we want you to stay and we want to bring other tribal leaders. And eventually he got to preach to all the tribal leaders. And within 70 years, everybody in Ireland was a born again Christian. Now that's St. Patrick. And 
oh, it's magnificent what happened because he set up the first monasteries and the monasteries then went all over Europe and Europe really received the gospel and trained people in the monasteries and all that comes through St. Patrick. Isn't that awesome? Right, and mom in Ireland. And if you think about it, when Patrick was doing a lot of his work in Ireland, yes. um, this was at a very dark time. It's called the Dark Ages right. on the continent of right. Europe. Right. And it wasn't a time where there was a lot of education. Nope. I mean, there was all kinds of, you know, it was pretty barbaric right, and right. really uncivilized. Right. But yet, many historians look at Ireland and say, Ireland kept civilization because writing, the Bible, and all all of that was very vibrant in Ireland. We talk right. about the Celtic, you know, and all that right. stuff. And I know that there's some, you know, stuff that's that's not necessarily godly there, but I, Patrick in Ireland is a very significant part of Christian history. And so we want you to come with us. You hear all this stuff and what mom tells you with the, the history of St. Patrick and it's really moving and really engaging. So get on the phone, get on the website. We'd love to put you on our hit list to pray for you that God would enable you to come. Now, you may be watching and thinking, well, I can't come because a, I don't have the money. B, I can't get time off work. C, who's gonna watch my kids? D, I've never traveled before. But here's the thing, God absolutely can overcome every single obstacle and wants to help you to really make an impact and not only impact you, but help you to make an impact through this ministry trip. So get on the phone, get on the website. We'd love to pray for you, send you the brochure for this and really see God connect you into some powerful, powerful opportunities, powerful ministry. And you know, mom, when we go on these trips, they're not like really rough trips. No, no. You're not sleeping on the floor. No. You don't have to tote along a sleeping no. bag. Talk about some of the, the things that we well, do for our travelers. We stay in nice hotels because, you know, we want the food, the water to be good for you. We want you to be secure. And so they are really nice hotels. But the thing I like the most is that you get to minister with us. And we pray for the sick and we see miracles, and we don't just see miracles through our hands, but through the team's hands. And you can imagine, if you have a hundred people with two hands laying hands on the sick, that's far better than two people. <laughs> with four hands, you get a hundred, wow, you got 200 hands. And you know, you say, well, I've never done anything like that. But remember, it's not your name that heals the sick, it's His name. And it puts a boldness in you. And I have a passion to change nations, to bring them the gospel in this time. And not that they know that Jesus died for their sins or rose from the dead, but also that he heals the sick. He's real, he's wonderful. And he wants to live big in us. So it's an opportunity for Jesus to live big in you. Now tell us some of the places we go to. Well, Mom, we're going to be going to Dublin and Belfast and Edinburgh. We get to see castles. We get to drive along the coast, the Atlantic coast in mm -hmm. Ireland. So we see beautiful things. We get to visit historic churches, see the Book of Kerry and the Book of Kells and all this. I mean, it's really going to be a powerful experience. So I just encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. We want you to get a free brochure on coming with us and just make it a priority. You may have said, well, you and Marilyn, you guys always go to these really random remote places, but <laughs> Ireland and Scotland, I mean, think about it. Ireland and Scotland, that's very, very familiar. Many of us, in fact, our last name Hickey is Irish. It's originally O'Hickey. So it's, it's Irish, and many of us have, you watching, you probably have some Irish background in you or Scottish background. So hop on the phone, get on the website. This is a great opportunity. And if you've never traveled before, never been out of the U.S., we would love to help you and to be right there with you, coach you along the way. And I'm telling you, it'll be the trip of a lifetime. So get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray that God would enable you to overcome all the obstacles. We want to put you on our hit list. We want to send you a brochure. The information's on the website as well. So get on the phone, get on the website. This is going to be a very, very powerful trip. And it's a really nice combination of ministry where we get to pray for the sick, 
Mom, we get to go street doing some street evangelism yes, stuff we do. too, I love which that. is so fun. Love it. Yeah, because it's just kind of out there raw. What's God going to do? It's an right. adventure. It's exciting. So we get great ministry opportunities. We get to minister as well in churches. There's some amazing churches there that I'm just eager. I can't even begin to tell. I'm so eager to get there, as well as seeing some amazing sites, seeing some historical things. And really, I think that some of the stuff, Mom, you brought in with St. Patrick, uh -huh. I just think is really powerful yeah. because you think back historically and you're like, wow, I mean, this man made such an impact. God used this man. He was a teenager when he was first kidnapped and right. brought over right. to Ireland and then came back. And when he came, when he revisited, he basically said, I'm going to move here for the rest of my life. I'm going to die yeah. here because yeah. it's such an important part. Is I feel like God's called me to this country. And so his, his investment, his life in that country, really we reap the effects of that investment even to this day. So we would love for you to come with us, get on the phone, get on the website. It's going to be a powerful experience. And if you've traveled with us before, of course you wanna bring your friends, bring your family, bring your kids, your grandkids. This is going to be the trip of a lifetime. I'm telling you, I love to see people come on these trips and see them experience God. And one of the things about these trips is so great, it gets us out of our comfort zone. Oh, it does. Yeah. And you meet new people, you bond with Christians, you learn new things. And I've never been to Scotland. I've been in 127 countries, but I haven't been to Scotland. So I'm really excited about going. I'm really excited about taking you with me. I think God will put Ireland and Scotland in our hearts. We will pray. We can be a part of a revival that affects all of Europe by doing what God tells us to do. And I found this out. You say, I don't have the money. I can't do it. But you know, God has plenty of money. You have a rich father. And he has a way of setting things in order for you to go. And maybe you're watching, you say, I can't go, but I could send someone. Oh, yes. Get a scholarship in there to go to Ireland and Scotland. Sarah and I are so excited to invite you to be a part of our team to Ireland and Scotland. Can you imagine? November the 1st through the 12th, 2014 ministry opportunities in Dublin, Belfast, Scotland. View the magnificent Irish cliffs overlooking the Atlantic Ocean while driving up the western coast, visiting historic churches, castles, and the Ring of Kerry along the way. Mom, it's going to be really powerful. We get to go to Dublin and Belfast and Edinburgh, and we totally want you to come with us. This will be a revolutionary trip for you. Not only do we get to see amazing things, but we also get to participate in ministry all along the trip. So get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you to come with us. We have a brochure for you, and it will absolutely be one of the best trips you've ever taken. Come with us today to Scotland and Ireland. have a really good idea for you. You could get on our website and sign up today. You're already excited about it. Or you could get on our website and say, hey, I want to give a scholarship for someone that can go to Ireland that would never have the opportunity and see Scotland and let it get in their hearts, give them a greater passion for the nations of the world. So isn't that a good idea? And you can respond to it. Now, let me just share something. And Sarah, I love the prayer of St. Patrick. 
And actually, it's a long prayer, and it has like two pages of prayer on the Trinity. And it's all I arise today. But this is my favorite part, and I want to share it with you. Can they get this on the website too? I think so, yeah. They can do it. Okay. This says, as I arise today, may the strength of God pilot me, the power of God uphold me, the wisdom of God guide me. May the eye of God look before me, the ear of God hear me, the word of God speak for me. I like this. May the hand of God protect me today, the way of God lie before me and the shield of God defend me. May Christ shield me today. Oh, is that good? Now, here's my favorite part. Are you ready? Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit, Christ when I stand, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, oh, Christ in every ear that hears me. That's out of Patrick. Right. I mean, this is the man who fed pigs for six years. This is the man that put his life on the line, changed a whole nation and changed a continent. And the prayer changes me. Sure. Oh, I love it. I love that prayer. And that's from St. Patrick, who yes. was a missionary in essence, gave his life for Ireland. And, he did. And we want, Mom, we have a group trip for people to go with us yes. in November to Ireland yeah. and Scotland. Right. So we want to invite you, get on the phone, get on the website, all kinds of information there. But let me tell you a couple things that we'll be doing on this trip. We have some very exciting ministry opportunities in Dublin, Belfast, and Scotland. Plus, on this group trip, we get to visit, oh my goodness, magnificent Irish cliffs overlooking the Atlantic Ocean while driving up the western coast, visiting historic churches, castles, and the Ring of Kerry along the way. Ugh, you totally don't want to miss this trip. Not only do we get to see very cool tourist stuff, including city tours in Dublin and Belfast and Edinburgh, but we also get to minister all along the way. We get to minister in churches. We get to do some street ministry. We get to see cool things. And we get to also, you, you will receive ministry. Every morning we pray. Mom and I teach along the way. It's going to be a really powerful, powerful experience. We'll vi visit Trinity College where they have the Book of Kells. And mom, I looked up, I was like, what's the book of Kells? Yeah. Well, it was written, it was actually translated out of the Vulgate, which is Latin, the Latin right, Bible. Right, right. And they took the gospels and they put them in the vernacular, in the Irish, as well as illustrating it. So making it beautifully adorned. And so it's considered one of the, the premier national treasures of Ireland. That's the book of Kells and it's the gospels. Now, one of the things I think is so powerful about Ireland, about Scotland is God used these nations, used Ireland specifically to be a light in a very dark time in European history. And God brought St. Patrick to Ireland. Ireland became a Christian nation. And really Ireland was the repository, the, the holding tank, if you will, uh, for all of Christianity and kind of the light on the continent for the continent during the dark ages of the Middle Ages, of medieval times. So it's a very powerful country and powerfully used by God in history, but also I know that God wants to use it today as well. So we want to invite you to come with us. This group trip, we've never been to Ireland before, never been to Scotland with a group trip before, and it will be absolutely amazing. We want you to come. We want you to bring your family, bring your kids, your grandkids, your parents. This is going to be a magnificent trip. And when you come with us, you won't be sleeping on a cot or having to bring a, a sleeping bag and, you know, just kind of roughing it. You'll be in nice hotels. We'll have nice coaches, nice buses to ride. And the food will be delicious. The water will be safe. You will absolutely love this trip. And if you've never been overseas, this is a trip of a lifetime. So get on the phone, get on the website. I'm telling you, this trip 
could revolutionize your life, but also God could use you on this trip to minister and reach and touch other people that need hope and need to know the love and the light of Jesus Christ. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We really want you to come with us. It's the first week of November and it's going to be an amazing trip. And maybe you've been with us multiple times, but you know, we've never been to Ireland, never wow. been to Scotland. So this is a trip of a lifetime, a once in a lifetime opportunity to come with us to Ireland and Scotland. And I'm telling you, you will never be the same. And I find mom, when I visit these nations, they touch me in deep right. ways. You know, I was thinking about this. Do you know that my national director for night care with Saving Moses yes. in Cambodia. She's Irish. Really? Yes. Isn't she's so wonderful. And you just, you just want to kiss her every time because oh. she's so fantastic. And I was like, wow, I didn't make that connection. Saving Moses has roots back even in Ireland because our national director's from there. That is so How good. How cool is that? And Sarah, what I like about this for everyone going, we're not just religious and talking about Jesus. We're experiencing Jesus. I mean, this prayer is someone who do, hasn't heard about Jesus. This is the prayer of someone who has Jesus. This is relationship. When you go on these trips, it's your relationship with Jesus. It's not hearing about him. It's Jesus in you and ministering through you and revealing himself to you. Some of my greatest, what can I say, revelations of Jesus have been on ministry trips. And I remember some of the first times I went to some of these nations, I was so frightened, but Jesus made himself so real to me. And that's what we want you to have, is a relationship with him. That you come home and say, wow, yeah, I have Ireland in my heart. Yeah, I have Scotland in my heart, but I have Jesus. He's in me. He's behind me. He's on the right. He's on the left. He's in front of me. He's when I lie down. He's when I stand up. And people see Jesus in me. That's what we love about this. So I encourage you, don't put it off. Walk out by faith. Get the information. Put your name in. We're going to pray for you. You have the ability to go today. Get on the website. Get on the website and help others to go because folks, we're living in a dangerous time, but we have Jesus. We have Jesus and he will reveal himself in us and through us. I can hardly wait to see the team we get. I know mom. Mm. And you know, I was thinking about this. I've been doing group trips for more than 40 years because you guys took me in essence on my first group trip when I was like five. And so That's I just see, I've seen God do amazing things in me on group right. trips, even as a little kid. I remember going to the Holy Land and seeing Israel and Egypt and the pyramids and, and the tomb. And, and then I remember going to China and ministering on group trips. And they have just absolutely changed, changed yeah. my worldview. So yeah. I just encourage you, if, especially if you have kids, make sure you bring them. Make sure you bring them because it is literally a very, very powerful experience first and foremost with Jesus. Because really the truth of it is, we can get all kinds of education, we can get all kinds of culture, but really what changes us and transforms us from the inside out is Jesus. And these trips are full of Jesus. We love, we love getting to pray in the morning. We love getting to minister. We love having ministry through us. We love receiving ministry to the people on the trips. It's absolutely powerful, life-changing opportunity. So get on the website, uh, call us. We want to get your name, put you on our hit list and pray for you that God would help you to come and that God would work and minister through you. So make sure you come with us November the 1st through the 12th. Uh, we're going to Scotland. We're going to Ireland with a group trip. It'll be a powerful, life-changing experience. And you just don't want to miss this. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to come to Ireland, come to Scotland, and a really wonderful blend of not only tourism and seeing amazing things, not only historical sites and castles and churches and all that, but also ministry blended together with seeing some amazing things. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We want you to come with us to Ireland and Scotland. It's very powerful. Sarah and I are so excited to invite you to be a part of our team to Ireland and Scotland. Can you imagine? November the 1st through the 12th, 2014. Ministry opportunities in Dublin, Belfast, Scotland. 
view the magnificent Irish cliffs overlooking the Atlantic Ocean while driving up the western coast, visiting historic churches, castles, and the Ring of Kerry along the way. Mom, it's gonna be really powerful. We get to go to Dublin and Belfast and Edinburgh, and we totally want you to come with us. This will be a revolutionary trip for you. Not only do we get to see amazing things, but we also get to participate in ministry all along the trip. So get on the phone, get on the website. We wanna pray for you to come with us. We have a brochure for you, and it will absolutely be one of the best trips you've ever taken. Come with us today to Scotland and Ireland. struggled with fear? The truth of it is, you and I, we've struggled with fear at various times in our lives, sometimes more uh, as a struggle and sometimes not as much. But the truth of it is, God wants to help us to not live fearful lives. I remember when I was uh, in my early 20s, I was having a really hard time with school and, and uh, some university stuff. And I remember I came home at Christmas break and I told my parents, I'm not going back. I'm not, you know, I'll just take a semester off. I don't want to keep going. And, and I remember my dad confronted me and he said, you know, you don't want to go back because you're afraid. You're afraid of, there were some situations that were going on. He said, you're just afraid. And he said something really wise to me. He said, Sarah, if you run from fear now, it will chase you for the rest of your life. And obviously that's made a really big impact on me because I remember it on a consistent basis from that point on. And so I just encourage you, if you're struggling with fear, get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. But I also want to minister and encourage you with this verse. It's 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. God doesn't intend for you to live in fear, to be dominated by, by fright and, and scared and what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. I'm scared of failure. I'm scared of this situation. I heard of people who are scared of flying, people who are scared of open places, all kinds of fears. God, God hasn't made us to be fear-filled people, but rather fearless people. So get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you that God would help you to overcome fear and that fear wouldn't control your life, but rather you would be dominated by the peace and the love of God ruling in your heart and mind more than any fear. And even if you've had generation curses of fear, God can overcome that as well. So get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you and resist fear in your life. 